welcome to the twilight zone. That is Nara. Okay, so this is a little bit different to what I normally do. I normally stick to like paranormal hauntings and UFOs or unidentified aerial phenomena. These are mysteries. So these are three mysteries that I personally love and they're not really talked about that much so I just thought it would be cool just to talk about them. So number one is the Shellhaven's mysterious time capsule. Vanishes. Vanishes. They always vanish. So there's this weird thing that happens whenever a time capsule gets buried in the Shellhaven. Later on, after the fact, when they go to dig it back up, it can't be found. And I'm not talking like, okay, it's just someone turning up with a shovel and like, yay, let's go find this. No, I'm talking like extensive ground radar and excavation work and they just cannot find a trace of them. They vanish. It's not just one either. If it was just one, I wouldn't even be doing this. But no, it's more than one. And a couple of them are notable as well. So, you know, like primary schools always do the time capsule thing. One of them that I'm going to be talking about is actually a primary school. But I'm just curious because my primary school out at Central Point, we did one in like 95. So 50 years time. I don't know, there's another 25 years left to go, but is it going to be there when we dig it up? I want to read my letter to myself. So, missing time capsules. The most notable one was actually buried near the Captain Cook Bicentennial Memorial on the southern bank of the Shellhaven River. So it was actually put there as part of the official opening in 1971 of the Bicentennial Memorial. So. The arch was actually demolished because of the new bridge going in. So New South Wales Transport actually attempted to locate it. And they tried really hard. They used all the gadgets, they used everything and were unable to find it. And the, the plan was, was that they were actually gonna give it back to the council and you know, the council were gonna eventually open it. But it wasn't there, so they couldn't do that. And um, there was a couple more, which were a lot earlier when they were put there. So um, the sandstone brickwork of the main wall of the narrow war memorial gates. So that's actually on the West Street and Junction Street intersection, that entrance. As you go in, there was one put in the sandstone wall which vanished. They weren't able to find it. Um, also the showground in the brick fence line in front of the narrow showground pavilion they were unable to find it when they went back for it. It was just not there. Um, so like I said, extensive searches, nothing. They even used the, the cool thing where they like x-rayed the ground and it wasn't there. It wasn't even like disturbed. Mysterious. Um, and yes, yeah, so like I said, there is one that is a primary school. So East Narrow Primary, um, the Star Garden area, I'm not sure if it's still called that, but the Star Garden area of East Narrow Primary School, um, one was buried there and when they went to dig it up 50 years later, it was gone, vanished. So, you know, the one that was on the southern bank of the river, I did kind of go, okay, well, you know, what about water tables underneath and things like that? That could have been like a possibility or something. Being sensible, um, but that many all over the Shellhaven, what, is someone digging them up or... Or what they're just disappearing into a void are the aliens still in them tell me what you think but yeah they just vanish um now moving on to the mystery of mystery bay it wasn't always called mystery bay it was actually called mutton fish bay until this mystery happened so on sunday the 10th of october 1880 so a long time ago a fishing boat was actually found on the rocks of Mush mutton fish point which is now called Mystery Bay. So um, the New South Wales Mines Department Geological Surveyor Lamont Young and his four companions actually just completely vanished. They vanished. They were on their way to survey the new Montreal gold fields near Bermagui and they just vanished. No sign of them, no trace of them. Um, you know, it was rumoured that they were possibly murdered, which is quite plausible, but their bodies have never been found and still remains a mystery what happened. So it is Mystery Bay now because of the mystery. Moving on to the last one. This is actually my favourite. So 
back in the early 80s, uh, several members of the community, notable members of the community, and most of them that were involved with politics and local council, um, all received an owl icon in the mail. So at the time they were calling them voodoo owls, but kind of sounds like Moloch owls, which is a pagan god from a long time ago. You can look that up yourself. So they received these little, I'm going to call them Moloch owls, <laughs> voodoo owls, the media were calling them, I think. So they received these owls. So the people that actually received them, I'll, I'll say who received them. It just gives a bit more credibility to it, not just, oh, some people in the council. So the then mayor, Harry Sawkins, received one. Alderman Gordon Revell, rest in peace, received one. Max Atkins, who also was a mayor, he received one. And South Coast PM John Hatton received one. Shellhaven and Yarra News newspaper editor at the time, Jim Baker, who may also still be editor, Jim Baker received one. And um, they all received these in anonymous envelopes. And some of them actually appeared in the council chamber's pigeonholes. Like Max Atkins, he's actually just appeared in his pigeonhole at the council. So what's interesting about this is, you know, there was all this speculation at the time and because it was in the 80s, there was this satanic panic going around. Um, <clears throat> you know, whether it was valid or not, that's open to individual interpretation. But um, what's interesting about this is soon after, uh, Gordon Revell actually died in a very tragic accident and his burnt out four wheel drive was actually found 100 meters, 150 meters um, down uh, embankment on a road that goes to Barrier Pumping Station. His naked body was actually found 20 meters from the car. Now, um, I have a witness account from a female and her partner who they were late teens at the time, so 19 to 20 at the time. And they actually report they were out near Barrier Pumping Station and it was daylight. It was daylight. It was the middle of the day and they actually heard an owl in the middle of the day and they felt like they were being watched. Um, so as they were leaving, they actually heard a man groaning and it got closer and closer and closer. And they then um, saw just the eyes of an owl watching them. So the owl itself was kind of blended in. It might have been a, a tawny frog mouth maybe or something but they said they could just see the eyes watching them and they were like fuck this <laughs> and they left and yeah I've actually been out there myself and I yeah I've had that same experience of, of being watched and you know that there's eyes somewhere but you just don't want to connect and make contact with them so yeah so there's three of my favorites anyway so I'll leave it at that